In the previous video we understood different types of contract. In this video we are getting into details of the utility or relevancy of these contract types in various scenarios. And I am putting four parameters like what type of work are suitable for which type of contract, role of a project manager, the cost risk to a buyer and flexibility to change, how these four contract, uh, three contract types impacts the flexibility to change. These are few parameters, there could be many more. The idea is once we understand from these three, four dimension, it gives us an idea to compare these three contract type. So let's look at type of work, fixed price contract. So as we understood about fixed price, they, you can commit for a fixed price when you really, really have an idea of the scope. And without knowing scope, if somebody commits for a fixed price, then the project is going to fail because someday either buyer will feel he committed wrong uh, or the seller will feel that it was, it was a wrong estimation and something I end up committing to, but it is not making sense. So both buyer and seller can get into a fixed price contract where there is a fair amount of clarity in the type of work which has to be performed. Even the way of doing work, like known house, are also pretty much clear. Say, I want to make something. So maybe the scope is clear, first thing. Second thing is how to make. That process should also be pretty much clear because then only both buyer and seller can do a reasonable estimate so that they can arrive to a commitment of cost and scope. So it's not only that I had need to have a clarity on scope, I also need to have a sufficient amount of historical data which enables buyer as well as a seller to do an estimation which is, which is, which is coming in an expected accuracy range so that both buyer and seller feel good about doing fixed price contract. So type of work where there is a more predictability, more clarity on the work. Examples, I, I spoke about flat. So you are getting a flat, holiday packages. In software development, many times when you have ready-made software ready, just it requires an implementation and installation at your place, usually they go for a fixed price. In engineering, when you have been creating substations for a while and the another utility also want a substation, you understand you have a specification related to it, you go for a fixed price. Construction of a road, you have a clarity on, you have a historical data, it is not the first time you are doing. You can calculate with a, with a decent accuracy, amount of money, amount of time it's going to take, you go for, for fixed price. So that's the fixed price contract. Cost reimbursable? So it's more like, so I can say that type of work where there is variability is low. So there is a low variability. In cost reimbursement, there is a high variability. So what does it mean? I'm just writing variable. Uh, the amount of work is very much abstract. The type of the solution is abstract. The solution will evolve as we move forward. So you need something, but you don't have a pretty much clear idea of what you really want. As you see, your idea will improve and you want to definitely make use of that improved idea. When you are doing cost reimbursable, your goal is not to get something in a limited cost. When you do a fixed price, you primarily deals in commodities. So when you are buying vegetables, onions, or when you are buying rice, grains, you know what the rice means. You have a decent idea of rice and you just go for, for a fixed price thing. But when you are going for creating a, a, a special dish for upcoming event or for yourself, so your idea is more focused on, your goal is more focused on creating that value, creating that experience, rather than getting something which you have already seen in a, in a minimum price. So the cost reimbursable is, when we get into a cost reimbursable contract, usually the idea of a buyer is not to get something in a bare minimum cost, but to get the goal achieved, even if in between the direction changes multiple times. And that is why, in order to provide that flexibility of change in direction, in order to accept the variability, high variability work goes into cost reimbursable. So which makes the, the, the seller also relieved that, okay, both of us are on the same boat as the buyer is saying, I will propose the solution. If buyer likes it, 
I, the buyer will pay for it. If he doesn't like it, I will find another solution. And this is how we will go forward. It's not like I have to implement something which is there in, in my mind. So very, very high variability. And in case of a time and material, I would say moderate variability. So you do have a certainty of the type of material and type of time and type of resources needed, but you don't have, have a predictability of how much time it will need. So you know that there are 10 workers I want to hire. I may need it for one month, I may need it for two months, but I, I am clear that this is the type of skill I need and this, these guys can do that work. So why can't I have an agreement on hourly, monthly rate of, of these people? So you do have a variability, but it's a moderate variability things. At least the process, material, people are pretty much predictable. That's why you go for a time and material based product. Now, interesting thing, role of a project manager. And many times we ignore this thing when we talk about PMBOK, we look at all 10 knowledge area and we, we ignore the type of contract the performing organization has with the buying organization. And this, in case of a procurement, we are more looking from a buyer point of view. But when we talk about role of a PM, we can think of even as a project manager point of view for rest of the knowledge area. So, when you are a project manager of a fixed price contract, if you are managing a fixed price contract, you are managing a very accountable position. Your responsibility to manage everything in a cost is very, very high. You are the one who, who makes majority of decisions because your customer does not care what kind of things you are buying. Your stakeholders, the customer stakeholder will not care about it. Your sponsor will care about it. So the power in a fixed price contract, the, the project manager has full accountability of managing the project in a given price. So variance becomes too much important. So the, the focus on cost and time and ensuring that things happens within cost and time is, is the focus of a project manager. If something goes wrong, project manager end up doing escalation, project manager has to do a very refined estimation, project manager has to keep projecting uh, the upcoming things, project manager need to do a very, very high level of risk management because this is what he has is expected to do in, in fixed price contract. Your sponsor would be targeting that how much money we can save because we don't have committed uh, that we will spend that much money, we only committed the work. So the so sponsor focus remains that getting the work done in the minimum cost. Whereas your customer, in, in case you, you have both the entity different, may focus on getting what best he can get out of you because his money is fixed. Now he's only focusing on what more I can get. So as a project manager, you need to balance in between. You have a defined scope where customer may keep asking for more and more and more because he knows the money is fixed. And sponsor says, if you are giving anything extra, make sure I get the money because I have taken all the risk. So that is what you see a, a contradiction when you are a, a, a project manager here. In a cost reimbursable case, if you are a project manager, your focus becomes more on transparency. Now, what is this? You need to ensure that you keep record of what you are buying, why you are buying. You, you need to ensure that you have a proper history of all the approvals you take from sponsors or customers for that work so that it doesn't happen that without approval you end up buying something and, and, the, and the buyer says he's not going to reimburse the cost. So the focus for a project manager is just keep customer, keep buyer informed about everything. So buyer should be making all the decisions related to purchase and all and your project manager should have all the signatures. That is what the project manager focuses on. If something is taking extra money, project manager has to just ensure that buyer know about it. That's it. He has not to make a decision, oh, we don't want to buy, we want to buy, cost variance is going high, cost variance is going low. He, may, he just need to project that information to a buyer that yes, this is going beyond cost estimated, this is going like this, and buyer keeps making all the decisions. So buyer is primarily responsible for managing cost and time in case of cost, uh, cost reimbursable. As a seller, you give all the options and you make sure that all the decisions are made after taking an approval from buyer. Time and material. So it's more about you need to ensure productivity. So, so you show more and more metrics which are driven by product productivity. So it's like 
here also you you don't focus too much on managing scope managing cost and other things you just need to ensure that people which are provided to the to the customer whatever time and material you have given they are of good quality now how they are getting utilized is something which your buyer is deciding so as a project manager if you are a seller project manager and you have given 10 people to them and you are expected to manage them also you are more and more focused on ensuring that these 10 people work is transparent they are filling the time sheet they are disciplined they are coming on time and that becomes your focus so you, metrics is productivity all those measurements is your focus area